So for this question, it follows on from the previous one, which is asking about the shear force diagram of this beam. We're now asked about the bending moment diagram for the same beam. So I've copied the free body diagram and shear force diagram from before, and I'm going to try and draw the bending moment diagram from these um, other two, and then we should be able to compare my answer to these four options that we have for the question. So for the bending moment diagram, we know that what contributes to it is the areas within the shear force diagram as well as any moments that we have on the free body diagram. So you can see here we have one moment, so we're going to need to make sure that we take account of it. So drawing this graphically, the first thing when we start here is that we encounter straight away that moment that's applied um, onto our beam. So this is drawn clockwise here. And remember that to take into account the sign convention for these bending moment diagrams, we need to have the opposite of kind of what's usual. So if this is drawn clockwise, it means that we need to have it going positive actually on the bending moment diagram. And it manifests as like a straight up vertical line, all right, in the positive direction. Remember to go and have a look at the recap video on this topic if you want this in a bit more detail. So that's the beginning. Now what we want to do is move back to looking at the areas on the shear force diagram um, because we don't have any more um, moments on the free body diagram. So immediately here we see that we're on the positive side of the shear force diagram. I should probably put the signs in. So if we're on the positive side of the shear force diagram, that means we're going to be going up on the bending moment diagram. And this is a flat line here on the shear force diagram. It ends up being a diagonal line when we go to the bending moment diagram all the way up to where it ends. Now what's going to happen is that we see we're on the negative side of the diagram, so that means that we're going to have our um, diagram going downwards. Now this time we have a varying um, amount of the shear force, so that means when we go to the bending moment diagram, it's going to be a um, parabolic curve um, that it looks like. Now how we can figure out what that actually looks like is, let's just quickly go back to review this line here. We can see that every time we take an equal step across, we have an equal amount of area that we add on, okay? And that's why it ends up being an equal gradient all the way up to the top. This time, as we take steps across, if they're the same distance each time, you can see that we're adding more and more area, all right, with each individual step. So what that means is that the first step we take, we're only going to have a little bit come off our bending moment diagram. Then we take another step, and it's going to be a bigger amount, so the gradient's going to get bigger. And then we take another step, and it gets bigger again. So it's going to be this increasing gradient um, that we see all the way down um, until it reaches the axis. And we know that these diagrams always have to start and end at zero. Okay, so that's why it's going to end up all the way down there. So that would be my answer for what the bending moment diagram should look like. So now we have to go back and compare this to what we see for the options. So with A here, all right, we can see it's got this initial step up, which is from this um, applied moment, which is good. It then has a um, you know, straight line gradient um, section, which is what we had here, which is good. But this last bit, it's going a um, straight line gradient downward, which is not correct. Um, it would have to be a straight line here for that to happen. Okay, so that one's out. This next one, um, we can see that it doesn't have that step up at the beginning caused by this couple moment. So that's definitely not the right answer. This one here, it's got the step up, it's then got the flat gradient um, that we see here, and then it's even got this um, parabolic section, which is the same shape as what we had here. Um, in fact, this is probably much nicer. So it's got a small gradient at the beginning, and then as you get to the end, it gets more and more steep. So that one's looking like a good option. For this last one, we've got the step up bit, which is what we wanted got the straight gradient here, which is what we wanted. We've got a gradient that's changing here and it's getting increasingly steep. However, it's got this step down at the end. And if that was to happen, we need an applied couple on the end here as well, which we don't have. So that one is wrong as well. So the answer is going to be B.